Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer, but, and this is the first show of 2024, and it's a very exciting show. I think it's a perfect show if you're brand new to painting, if you just got your first painting set, if anybody gave you a primary painting set, or you were thinking about taking a painting in the new year, I am going to tell you about my favorite student paint. I'm going to tell you about my favorite primary set. I'm going to give you tips and tricks that make this set so wonderful and successful for you the first time you use it, but here, here's a true story. This video will work for any set you're shopping for. So regardless of where you're shopping or what you're doing, you want to watch this because this is going to help you make the best first painting decision. Now in this video, I'm going to talk to you about my promotion I'm running right now out of my own art store because I have an art store and I can do those things. And uh, so I guess this is my shameless <laughs> self-promotion on my art store. I have 35% off this set. This is the primary set the one i did my beginner's acrylic course on the one i'm about to do the new beginner acrylic course on it's 35 percent off from january 2nd to january 7th of 2024 now this set i love it it's available a lot of places um you can get it around the world so uh saint Elie is a 135 year old uh, paint company so they've been here a minute a lot of people carry them and I'm going to give you all the reasons why for you as a beginner having a company like that make your starter set is everything everything for how you have an experience and this particular one comes with the eight free tips now if you do get a set from me today uh, you get this free download and this free download which you could just follow along in your 1264 pad but you get the free download will give you the color wheel to understand how to get colors out of your set it will give you the core techniques that you have to be able to do to just do most paintings and a way to practice them and a verbal recognition of what they are it has the exchanges for the colors. So I do the same color palette every year. I've been teaching online for 10 years and I have this uh, set, this palette set because it's more economical than a professional level of paint. And hey, when you're starting out, you may not want to have to invest everything the first day. You don't want to get the best set of golf clubs the first time you try to golf, right? But you do need to get a golf club good enough to be able to hit the ball and not have the head fall off. Mm. That's what this paint is. It's a really high quality, less expensive tool. It's just backed by even better tools. So the reason it's great here is I tell you, if you see me use Cad Yellow Medium in any of my lessons, I let you know what number you use in this set for that lesson. So if you bought this and you did the beginner course and you had half the pouch left, which you probably will, or two thirds, you can then go use these for all of my lessons which I think is pretty terrific. Now on the mic is my husband, John. Hi, how you doing? He is helping me bring this new show. So in 2024, one of the things I really wanted to do was save you guys some money. I think John and I felt like everything, everything was going up in cost in a way. Thank you so much, Heather C. That, that was so unsustainable and so many people couldn't take up painting because they just couldn't get into all the materials. That's why I am doing another new reimagined, whole new reimagined beginner acrylic course coming up is to help you guys get on board if you've got budget concerns. Mm -hmm. So this is also good for you. Even if you don't get this set, still hit that subscribe button. Remember me, bookmark me because I'm going to help you have big gains in your painting experience on a smaller budget with the series. So it's going to be great if you uh, are experiential in your learning instead of lecture like I'm doing right now. If talking, you need to be doing while someone's talking, this will be a little more tuned in for you. Ramona, Razy, thank you so much. I appreciate this so much. So this is there. Now, abstract acrylic. Why? Why? Well, like I said, I think 2024, we got to make sure that we include all of our future artists and being able to address the budget is for that. I like this paint because normally in student paint, um, man, it it is inconsistent. It's often like cottage cheese and you have to return it. It separates. It's not creamy. And, and the biggest thing is that it totally deflates or shrinks as it dries. So... Really, for professional artists, it's not that we're stuck up and we don't want to save a penny. We all want to save a penny. That's something all artists have in common. We all love to save our monies. But the problem with economy paints were they couldn't perform, like literally perform like a heavy buy professional paint. They just let me down personal for the most part. Not, not everything everywhere, 
But that was a challenge I was having as a teacher. And I ran into these through a very strange series of events and over the years have tested them. And, and we'll go into that. Now, for this particular promotion, you get a true yellow. Oh, if I can be small, I go over to my palette and just go over. So in the set, you will get a true primary yellow and that will exchange for my cad yellow medium. It's just more neutral. It's just not as warm. A true primary red, and that's a very good exchange for CAD red medium. It's, again, not as warm. It's not as yellow. But if you ever watch my eight colors every artist needs to have, you'll know why you have to have less bias in that color for this to work at all. And then there is thalo. Well, it's, it is blue, primary blue, but it equates to a thalo blue. Titanium white, same. Mars black and look at the size of the pouch. So the pouches are clear. So the color that you see is the color that you get. They were designed so you can step on them. The line has 60 colors, 36 of them are pure pigment. Why would you care? Well, those pure pigment colors are what 99% of all art lessons and all tutorials and everything out there, whether you're in college or whether you're taking a class with me online or whether you just paid for an art retreat, the colors that you're looking for in your student list are usually in those 36 pigment colors, unless they're a hue from a historic color that nobody knows how to make anymore or it was deadly or it just faded out. So those 36 are key and they are super high quality. Another reason why that 36 is key, remember that company I mentioned that's been around for 135 years at Sennelier? Well, they just have been making paint forever in France. You can go to France right now and have paint made for you custom in their store. They are famous for oils. They are famous for pan pa the pa pastels, chalk pastels. They invented oil pastels for Picasso. They're famous for watercolor. They have been making paint. And so when they made, when they finally decided to get into acrylic, they didn't want to do it until they knew it well. And so they, like Holbein and Golden, have a lot of colors that other acrylic companies don't have because they think like a master heritage company. So they're giving you innovation while throwing some heritage at you which means the phthalo blue that they start from their pigment is their pigment how they got the cost down in this set is by using a bright high quality yellow instead of pure cadmium pigment but they didn't put a filler in it they didn't add a bunch of chalk they didn't save money on the polymer and all that craziness they just use a reasonably bright non-cadmium pigment and the same with the red and on this you can see the pigment codes you can see this is pw6 this is real titanium white it's the real deal it'll tell you how light fast it is and it will tell you all of the safety standards it goes to on the back of the pouch so you can see the color guess what four ounces most acrylic tubes are what they are two ounces now listen we've done acrylic april my 30 day painting challenge uh, many years now since 2019 2019 was the first time i tested this paint live in front of everybody if you want to see a wild ride i hadn't used it in that capacity before and i decided to do a daily painting challenge live with this paint and tell everyone what i thought of it at the end it worked well for everybody involved but boy that was a risky endeavor but i i i can tell you having done that several years the first year i did this i had tons of this paint i left over after that i did the company's professional brand this is the same company this is their professional brand two ounces now i end that program with pretty much half a tube of paint the four ounces are a lot of paint and the white, you don't have to go out and upgrade your white, white right away. You're not going to be like, oh, I got to upgrade all this paint because it's just awful. That's not your experience. So you get a lot of it and it has high coverage and high quality. Another thing I want you to see there is on the paint tube. I think I've got a big tube of the um, Sennelier. You'll love this. So. This is their economic brand. This is like you're doing a big painting or you're painting real thick or you're doing a student collection or you're getting into painting and you're learning, but you need quality product. See that how it says 116 and it says 116 here. So if I'm talking to you about my Naples yellow on my Senele line and I, you see 567, it's the 567 in the pouches. So you can go back in and see the color list on my colors and I think my mods even sometimes have that somewhere where it tells you the number so you can buy the student and we have the exchanges so you can use the student line if you're not up to or cannot budget the pro line right now or you're just not ready for it or whatever but guess what when you're ready what's there 
this company's next up. And is it next up? Yeah, it's 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 incredible. It's like painting with butter. I love it. It's Golden, Holbein, Saint Elier. I love PBL. There's a couple companies I love them, and this is this is one of them, and it is fantastic. So you've got the Heritage, you've got the 36 Pure Pigments, they've got iridescence, they've got neons, they've got all the fun stuff. Guess what else it comes in? It comes in inks. And it comes in heavy bodied and it comes in soft bodied. It comes in a mat and it comes in liners and they're all refillable. It's crazy. And then this set performance comes with this great set of tips, which I'm going to show you in today's video how to use. Now, if you decide to get this today between January 2nd and 7th in 2024, you get 35% off. But I'm just telling you, even if you're having to buy this at Jackson's in the UK, right? Or, or, or at King's Framing and Art in, 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 in Canada and hey shout out your art store if you're out of the United States and you want to tell people about your great local art store um, they probably have this set of five with the tips and I believe it's going to continue to get distributed in different big box chains and stuff like that so I, I I'm investing in this because it, I'm invested in you and I need a set that doesn't work with just the last beginner acrylic painting course which is free and is there and works with the set and will take two years off your painting journey um, but also for future courses that I do with primaries or that I do uh, for e economy and all of that, that your distribution is only gonna get wider and better. I absolutely believe that this brand in five years will be super accessible to everybody everywhere, even in more rural art deserts. Like if all you have is a big chain in your area providing art supplies, I think you're gonna find it there because these guys are really about getting it everywhere. Um, <clears throat> so I would love you to get it for me, but if you don't, that's okay, because I love you anyway. <laughs> How's that go? John's like, man, you're monologuing today. All right. Now, listen, mentioned, I mentioned earlier this set, right? This is the company that made oil pastels for Pablo Picasso. They, they have like worked with Gauguin. They've worked with everybody. Like they actually have a book that you can have to study in school about their company's history because it's a heritage brand. They also care about green issues. Uh, the pouches allow you to get 100% of the use. Um, they're just fantastic. Now, if you do get today's thing, and you can watch this anyways, even if you don't, you can learn from this. It's still good for you. It comes with this download and the download, where did I put the, there it is. I have a finished one here. So this will let you, and can you be close to, uh, my pad? I don't know if you can zoom in, John. Zoom into this texture here. Now there's a short video, one minute video that does show this again, but I've allowed this to dry. You're going to see it come out wet. The first biggest reason why I'm insane for this particular line of paint is the fact that when it dries, it doesn't disappear. If I do another non-name brand, I'm not going to name other brands of student paint, cheaper sets of paint, um, with the exception of golden. If you get the golden set of primaries, yeah, it will hold up, but you're going to have to buy golden to get that same performance in my experience. That's my opinion. I've painted 2,500 paintings. It's been on YouTube and I was painting, I grew up with an artist mom. And so I feel like I have a lot of experience. Oh yeah, and I went to art school. But it is my opinion. So my subjective opinion is to get this effect, you have to upgrade to a professional line of paint. The only other good professional line of paint where I like their, their primary set is the golden one. And that's, it's not inexpensive. So this is amazing. It's just amazing. And then, um, We've got fine lines. It tells you how to do fine lines, how to do blending, how to do dry brushing. On the worksheet here, it gives you do ADHD now. <laughs> it gives you the, the yeah. So it gives you those exchanges. And it, I'm going to show you how to fill this out. I'm also going to show you how to make your own value scale. See this here where I punch this out and right there. So when you print this out, when you buy the thing, you get a link to get this and to print this out. And I just use regular copy paper here. You just take a hole punch and you just punch a hole punch in it. You can also just make your own grayscale and hole punch, just so you know. By the way, is this a real art tool? Yes, I paid a lot of money to have my own. <laughs> it hangs from a little... Because <laughs> I was like... But then I realized, you know what? Not everyone is just buying these specialty tools. Let's just make sure you have access to one. Why do we care about this? Well, this is a really cool thing because sometimes in painting, it's very hard to tell how light or dark something is. So see this gray here on my color focus card? I can find how dark that gray is using this. 
right? I might still see the hue of the gray, but the value of the gray I can see is here. So even when an optical illusion, because there's a bunch of optical illusions, super fun TikTok to watch optical illusions with color. But sometimes if you put two hues that have particular color effects in your brain, you won't be able to see how light or dark something is. And you'll have a really hard time getting the value in the shading. And you'll just feel like you're a crazy person that just can't shade a ball. You could last week, but you can't this week. This is what's happened is there's a value effect that you can't see because of another optical illusion. Remember, purple is an imaginary color. Your mind makes that up. A lot of this your mind is kind of making up, which means there's a subjective nonsense going on inside there. It's wonderful for you being the unique being that is the artist you are. But this lets you see, you can see that this color is lighter everywhere until you get into this range. And then right there, you can see it has to be here. And then you can tune it into that, even if you're really stuck. That's just, you can make that for yourself. So we're going to do the color wheel. We're going to do all of that. And listen, there's going to be videos dropping about this all week. I want to make sure that we start 2024 with a program for people on a budget. So if you're looking for a painting program for people on a budget right now, hit, hit the subscribe button. Give me three videos. I promise you'll be in love with me. Or at least very fond of me. And, and my, my need to give you all the information and not make your beginner experience a misery. And, and I'll tell you basically why that is. Okay. I, I love subscribers. So I, will tell you, I love subscribers. I love how YouTube and Facebook and all these places help me meet more amazing people to be in my art fam and to teach art to. But it's not my primary goal. My primary goal is just to make you brilliant at painting. <laughs> so definitely hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be more than I'm going to be chasing an algorithm or doing that. I'm worried about you. You. And your painting experience. So let's get into our worksheet here. Now I have put out this paint, but I do want to show you something about opening the tube. When you buy the acrylic abstract pouches, they can have air pockets. These things are flown, they're shipped, you don't know how that goes. So yeah, you can use things like batter rules, like some people like to squish out the pouch and, and try to work it upside down, right? They do that. Um, when you open it, it's not too challenging to open. It should open fairly easily, but you will get hanging chads, which are these little plastic things that need to come off. You can use a tool to do it, or you can just take them off with your hands. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable with your tubes of paint. So take the little chads off, the plastic bits. Now, I've got this here, and I can kind of see a little bit of an opening in there that might be an air pocket. And I'm just going to squeeze this out in the corner so you can see how to squeeze it out. So when I squeeze out my tubes, and I'll do it right here, John. All right, I'm going to squeeze it out. I squeeze very gently. I don't, I don't look at the thing and go, do you have an air pocket? Because the one day I do that, I'm going to have titanium white all over my face and it'd be washing paint out of my eye. Nobody needs to do that. Don't worry, whatever be cad, but still, you want to wash paint out of your eyes. So squeezing gently, 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 gently. Now this one has traveled, right? So see how that's coming out? This one's traveled with us and been stored in storage for a year. So this one has been heated and stored in storage for a year. Let me squeeze out uh, one that has not. That's why the this part is more formed. It's gotten cold and then warm. But the buttery consistency, and I can show you with my finger, is the same. So this tube got packed up when before we even told you guys we were going to Ireland and got put in a storage unit to just wait until we figured out what was going on with Ireland and then had to be shit like put in trucks and moved and flown in so it's been through some temperature and a couple other things and it's still here it's still buttery still the deal I'm gonna wipe that off uh, you can get any dry paint off of your nails or any of your stuff with rubbing alcohol. So that's how I squeeze that out. I'll squeeze out white again so you can see me do it again. Here's the white. I open it up. And I'm going to hold it down and I kind of press out, squeeze out, squeeze out, squeeze out. And then I press down and squeeze off. And see that that keeps it like that. And then the caps are mostly self-cleaning. I bring that back down. If I finish a bag, when I get it all the way to the end and I finish a bag, I um, throw these caps in rubbing alcohol, 91%, and clean them with a little pipe cleaner and put them in a Ziploc bag to save on the rare occasion that I lose one of the caps for the pouch. Uh, if anything happens to these pouches, the company's very committed to fixing it. So like if you just, if it pops, your Great Dane does step on the pouch and, and, and that was the one pouch that didn't, I don't know, hold, and then it comes out. You can 
write the company. They're incredible people. I wouldn't. And that's the other thing I want to tell you. How, how do I know about them? Uh, years ago when I started on YouTube, uh, pretty close to the beginning, I went to my first trade show because I just had questions that only talking to material makers would answer. And while I was there, I ran into an artist and he was painting this crazy painting and he had these, he, these crazy pouches in his hands. I'd never seen him before. And he was just squeezing them out and painting right there. And I was like, dude, what is going on? And he sits and talks to me, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes about this paint and how it's changed his life. And he loves it so much. I'm not with anybody. He's not, he's just talking artist to artist, like, oh my gosh, let me tell you. And he tells me how he paints these really thick impasto paintings. And he's never been able to really afford it because the cost was so high. He couldn't use the colors he wanted, but now with this company and changed everything. And he showed me the tips and all of that. And his biggest thing was like, it doesn't flatten when it dries. And that's when I started really noticing that student paint was leveling and it was just not, I, I had organically moved on from it into professional, not because I like more money being spent out of my bank account. I hate that. But because I hate being messed with in the performance of my product. So like that really caught my ear. And then, you know, in 20, I, I met the guys who had imported it in. You guys know Pierre, you guys know Andrew, if you've been on the channel for a while, they're friends. There's my bias. Um, I like the people I buy the paint from too. They're my friends. That's my bias there. But I have a lot of friends that I like them very much and I don't talk about their products either. They don't relate to what you guys do or maybe I wouldn't want to back that up. But I think they're lovely people. So these guys are my friends and they make a lovely product. Are we ready to get into the worksheet? All right, let's hope, hope I remembered to have glasses. Of course, the ones I remembered are the green screen ridiculous ones. My face is going to be a little floaty. Now I'm going to take a round brush and we're going to start with our color wheel. Now, if you've had any trouble understanding how the color wheel works in relationship to paint, and this is so funny, uh, Luna Bella came back and said to me that the color wheel explanation she got at school had like messed her up, but this one had helped her have it all together. So right here, you see the center triangle. The center triangle is the principal concept behind the color wheel. The top is always yellow which is why I put my yellow here at the top of my paint layout. And the reason the top is yellow is because that is the industry standard and that is how we orient the wheel and your wheel then will match other wheels so I'm not teaching you upside down. So I'm going to paint in very carefully and when you have yours, you paint in very carefully because you're going to put this on the wall. When this is done, you tape this up, frame it, you put it up on the wall for reference because it's going to make your life easier. I have things like this all over studio painted up for reference. I make all kinds of things like this for myself and, and by kids' students. So I was like, go make them for my grown-ups. See how that triangle tells you where that position is on the wheel. Well, that, that made that clear, didn't it? Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to position in red. And that one is down in that down corner. And you don't have to paint it perfect. I have a little, little boop over. It just depends on how, you know, how you want to be. And then I'm going to come paint this in. And that lets you know where true red has to be on the color wheel. Or whatever your true wet red is for the particular wheel you're building. By the way, this works with, you could do this with ultramarine blue, uh, yellow ochre, and and uh, any red you wanted and, and alizarin, which would be tough, but you could still see what colors. Thank you so much for joining uh, emojis. Enjoy that. Um, so you can then see how any of your colors will work with this. This works with crayons. This works with watercolors. This system works with everything. It's foolproof. So now I'm going to come here and put in my blue. Yeah, I spend time cycles thinking on these things. I should have probably gone to college to be an educator really honestly instead of an actual artist because I do love thinking this stuff up like so much so I'm putting my blue here now I know where my primary colors exist on the color wheel now again if you've been having color wheel hang in with me because you're going to get it in a second and when you do you'll never not get it again so when you're looking at a color wheel you'll see equally spaced colors placed on the wheel yellow red and blue they are three distances apart right on each segment primary colors that's the basis for all of your colors except when it's not but this set is very good at getting you very close to a good orange a good green and a good purple the problem with most primary color sets that are out there they pick the wrong primaries and so you don't get 
a good secondary. You don't get good orange, or you don't get good purple, or you don't get good green. Something is just a hot mess. This set has got good primaries. That golden set I mentioned earlier has good primaries. So the secondary colors, which is what we put here, that's what this shape is for. What do these two colors make? Now, I'm going to take one part yellow and one part red, and we mix them together equally. Equal parts of one part red and one part yellow. And then I'm going to paint in this smushy, smushy triangle. For some of you guys, when I when I make this next point, it's going to click. I love when you guys like have click moments where you're like, oh, wait, now I get it. OK, so see this triangle here. So equal parts of yellow and red, yellow and red in the middle of the three makes orange. Whenever you look at a color wheel, whenever you make a custom color wheel, you want this secondary color to be equal parts of your two primaries, be they these primaries or other primaries. It would not matter. That's how you know what this color is on any color wheel. It is exactly, if you picked up a color wheel, like how do I make orange? I mix exactly, I read and exactly in one to one. Now, if I added one part more yellow, right, which is essentially two parts yellow, two yellow and one red, I get this tertiary color yellow orange. That's just how that happens. That's what we've been talking about with secondary two share colors, all this stuff. You can make everything from primaries, all of that. What we're saying is the halfway point between orange and yellow is yellow orange. You're adding more yellow to the orange. If I add another part of red to the orange, I'm not going to get my red red, but I'm going to get a red orange, a coral. The reason I paint on my uh, big lessons, my big three hour lessons with my big pro palette and all that with split primaries, um, I've got a ton of videos on, especially the eight colors you need, right? But you can see here, this red is different than this red orange. And that's how those colors are different. Patty Hoffman in the house. How are you doing, Patty? So good to see you. Now. That's pretty easy down here. This one is the harder one in the set and I will get you the workaround, but this workaround will work with any set, so be with me. Okay, so now we understand that half red and half blue, that is whatever our violet for this set will be. So I just wanna mix about the same parts of red and the same part of blue, All right? And that will be my uh, indigo. Right, and that is the color that goes between. And the reason you just saw me add white is that this color sometimes to our eyes reads as a chromatic black. Um, in other words, it doesn't have any black pigment in it, but it's super dark and our brain, especially when the paint is white, just files it under black. And a little bit of white for the purple, if you're not getting a bright, vibrant, over the wall purple, is to add a little bit of white so you can see the purple. Now I'm gonna add, it's just like the yellow here, I'm gonna get, it's two parts red to one part blue. So I'm getting a violet, a red, a red violet. You, if you, the worksheet, how do you get the worksheet? Uh, if you purchase this set from us, uh, it's a free gift. I give it to you as a gift. I give it to you as a gift. I'd not be mad at you if you make your own though. My, 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 my peeps will tell you, like, if you just made your own, I wouldn't be mad at you. Like, if you can't so, get the set right now, I won't be mad at you. you, made, just... you this was, a, this, this was a, uh, a little PDF that you made. So if you, if you buy this set, then you get this little download. It comes with your, your purchase. But uh, you, could, you could make shift your own if you were just working with the paint you had at home. You could go do the Color Cat course <laughs> with the kids course. Has, has a, a has a color wheel, if you'd like the color wheel. That you can print off of our traceables. But this is a gift from me to you. This is, this is, I'm giving you what I have in my own studio, which is cheat sheets on the wall that let mm -hmm. me look over if I need to remember something about what I'm doing. If I get new paint that I don't know anything about, I make a color wheel and then I know everything about it in one session instead of having to do 30 paintings. If I make a color wheel and a value chart and I do this, then I know my product right away. Right. Now, if I add blue to that right there, I'm going to add the two parts blue, and then I'm going to go ahead and get some white in it. Just so that I can see that, I can see that I have a 
blue violet there what I'm trying to get to. A little lighter than that. And maybe a little bluer. So this will be more like, honestly, like in our ultramarine. But this would be where I'd normally pop my ultramarine in. So when I do my pigment wheels, when I just do a wheel off pigment, which I've done with you guys, and that's out there for you guys to use. I do have color wheels that you guys can download. <laughs> many, many. This is just a special gift for, for doing the set. All right. So now we are there. And so immediately we can say, all right, the weakest colors, in other words, the, le the least vibrant, the least neon of ours is the purple. But by doing it this way and seeing it, I see the range I can get. So I'll be able to get plenty of purple into my paintings and not be frustrated about it, knowing where my purple ranges are. So now I've got yellow and blue, and we know this is one part blue and one part yellow to make green. And I think I uh, over parted the yellow. That's what you see me adjusting back in is like, oh, I added too much yellow, too much blue. So this is where my green is. That's the halfway point between this blue and this yellow. Whatever paint you use, you could do this with your golden paint too. Uh, whatever paint you use, you just put that right there. Right? And then we're going to put it right there. Now we know where our true primary green is on our set in art terms. Right? So yellow is the two parts yellow to a part green. So there's our yellow green. And now I'm going to add one part blue into my green. Oh, I had too much yellow still on my brush. That's why you see me adding more blue is I recognize I had too much yellow in my brush. I had to just do one more blue. So now we have a turquoise, a blue green. Now on this set, if you purchase this set, here's cad yellow, here is cad red, here is right in between these two is thalo blue. This is like a thalo green right here. Thalo green, this would be where your thalo blue would sit. This is about where your ultramarine sits. Right? This is kind of in here, is it in your docks? You'd use this with a little bit of white to, and maybe a touch of orange to get into a quinacridone. So all of these, you can get to even my whole palette from this set. You can get to any colors. Um, the beginner course will be starting here in January, and they will be live and recorded videos that lead out. My goal is to have all of you ready to do acrylic April with me this year, 2024. I want as many Sherpettes, as many Sherpazoids, as many of you as can come with me, every member of our art family through Acrylic April this year because it's a big year. It's a year I, it, you'll know the theme soon, <laughs> but I definitely don't want you guys to miss out because, and if you still had some of this paint left over, you will know how to use it for Acrylic April there too because you could continue on. I think hopefully I'll have enough in you. This is a little bit like a little dash of the big art quest. And it's a little dash of the beginner course, but it's a little bit with ADHD in mind. And maybe uh, this class being the most lecture intensive, but this is a marketing introduction thing. The other ones will be a little tighter in and, and a little more hands on, I feel. All right. Now, on this course, too, we've got the dry brushing. We've learned how to use our value scale over here to find color. We know what all of our colors are. We know our stages are dry brushing, dry brushing. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to wipe it with a paper, with towel, paper towel, something. I'm going to get all the water out of it. It's damp. I'm not even changing brushes. But see how I can splay it out because it's dry. Now, if I come here and I put barely any paint on here, I'll even wipe it off on the paper towel. So there's barely any paint on here. This is what I'm practice, practicing is getting dried paint to even skip over the barely any bump on the surface of the paper. So what I want to see is a dry brush. Now where I got into the belly, it started to uh, not be as dry. And so I have to go back to the toe. That's because there's some belly uh, moisture left. And then I can come back and wipe again. And I'm practicing that. So even on paper, I can still get a dry brushing effect, which means you can get it on any surface. Let's do blending. This is paper, copy paper from my printer. It's not a specialty surface, doesn't have sizing on it. I'm comfortable doing this. I'm going to take a little red, a yellow right here. 
And I'm kind of putting it on amply because what I want to do is be able to blend the two colors together. All right, so I'm going to put the yellow there and then I'm going to get into my yellow orange. I'm going to come back in with this brush, wet into wet blending. Blending these two colors together, creating a gradual transition. I'm going to come into my kind of yellow, red, orangey color. And this is still wet. I will be able to blend that back. So what you're trying to do is blend while the paint is wet. When it starts to dry, what you get is banding. So applying wet, applying and blending wet paint on canvas for smooth transition. So if you hear someone say blending, that's what they're talking about. Dry brushing, that's what they're talking about. The other thing, I think you can't really deal with paint at all until you got some fine lines in you. So I've got some fine line practice. I'm going to get my blue here. And in the fine line thing, it says use a pointed thin brush, maintain light, steady pressure, dilute paint slightly for a smoother float. Now, again, this set is a brilliant set. And if you're looking for a first set, if you're looking for a set to get somebody painting and you don't want to give them junk, it's a great set. It is a great set. It is a great set. Professional artists, they are always going to be delighted to discover an economy paint that doesn't suck, that you could squeeze out thick and not worry about the expense. I am on the toe of my brush. Notice that I come, I get a little bit of water, I bring it over, one drop, I thin it into my paint. I go roll, roll, roll on the toe of my brush. And now I'm going to lightly draw and press down and lightly draw and press down. And I'm going to practice getting curvy, thin lines. I want to get as fine of a hair as I can and then as thick of a line as I can. Practice that, making marks. Your brush at home isn't my brush. You're, you've got to get a relationship. You've got to get in a good relationship with the brush that you have, right, to do that. And the only way you can be in a good relationship is you've got to work together as a team. You and your brush have got to work together as a team. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the tips now. And this is the other reason why I think this worksheet is so valuable. Besides having this gentle reminder when you're starting out, maybe I'm having trouble with the value. I've got a tool. Maybe I'm having trouble with dry brushing or blending or getting my line quality. I remember to practice. Maybe it's an exchange issue. And then finally, this is going to let you understand how your paint looks dry. It's going to let you see the color shift of your paint. That's the change of color as paint dries. In watercolor, it gets lighter and acrylic, it gets darker. It's going to let you see shrinkage. So if I make a brush stroke through my paint and it's my favorite brush stroke and I don't want it to go away, and believe you me, that happens. It's like you just, you just brush stroke out the most beautiful flower petal and then it goes, right? Like with professional paint, you can see what you've got here. All right. Woo! Now, I do a lot of blending, and there will be actually lots and lots of blending in the upcoming course. I just want you to see that even on copy paper, it can be done. This is the hardest it will ever be. <laughs> Getting a good blend on paper, because paper is absorbent, canvas lets it float, but we're not using a medium. We're not using anything. We're just practical good knowledge. Now, I have this organized, and I'm going to start with my white. To do the tips, you come and you uncap the paint. I like to put my uh thing aside all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to remember what the tip is this is the smallest round on the tip so one mark needs to be the tip kind of to let me know what it is I, at least i might need to do two then i'm going to squeeze and fill in with my white, all of this, squeezing out this too. And then layer two. Because I, you guys will want to see and then try to make some peaks and stuff. Try to make some crazy stuff that shouldn't last. Right? And there you go. Now that's going to take, to move it, 24 hours to dry. If you were going to paint that thick on your canvas with these tips, it takes, uh, give it three weeks and before you varnish and spray varnish. So now when you want to clean these, when you're, when you're painting with them, I say have a bucket of water to the side because what happens is the paint is now in here just like any other cap and through there. Uh, I find that they clean with a uh, pipe cleaner set cleaning. So and rubbing alcohol if, any, if it ever dries on there. But right after you're done with it, I put it in water. And that way the paint doesn't dry in it. Now I'll put this paint to the side to use later. 
And then I will get to my black. Black and black. And my next tube. So I'm going to put that there. I am also organizing how I lay it out because I don't want my white cap to get my black dirty. So I'm going to come here and I am going to put this on. Um, look at that. Like it's so easy to go on and off. It is so easy to go on and off. It's not work. Okay. Then I can. The, that's the size of my tip there. That's my visual reminder. Now I can paint out things that let me know what is going on. Structurally thick. So I can see it later. And this is going to let you know how your black looks as it's dry. There we go. We're going to put this in the water. Put it aside. Now, if you change tips, if you move a tip from one color to another, and I will show you that over here when we're all done, it, it, what will happen is, yeah, there's a really cool mixing. It's a, a cool marbling. First, it comes out one pure color, then a cool marbling, and then the color that you want. But you do get some backwash into your tube. So this is my biggest round, and with my biggest round, I will go ahead and use my yellow. Right, and I'm going to make my first mark dot. By the way, if you're an art store and you want to buy the set so you can have the download, or you can even just write us as an art store, I guess. <laughs> just occurred to me is like every art store needs one of these out. Look, if you're an art store and you're a consumer over at Mac, you can call them and we're cool. Just know we're sweet and we will be lovely to you. So now I have pushed out this, right? And you can see both the size of the tip, the marks that it makes, and how it works. So I can put this aside. I'm also going to now know how my yellow looks when my yellow dries. And I'm going to be able to show you a dry versus wet, which how lucky, right? That's some truth. In a world where everything is peak, that's some truth. I'm going to put my red here. That's also why I'm doing this first one live with John. It's real, real. <laughs> it's the real, real. Okay, so this is the double tap. This is Everybody loves these. And so the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze straight down so I can kind of see it. And I'm going to need to connect it. All right. So that tells me that what I've got there. And then I'm going to go like this. And then that lattice will let me also see, like, the reason I'm having you do that lattice is you can't, there are other brands of paint, I won't name them, but if you tried to do that, if you tried to even put this tip on them and do that, they would all flatten out before anything even got where it was going. All right, let's get into the blue. Make sure I put my, let's see, so I've got my five caps, and then I know my blue is my blue. You can buy the eight set, the, 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 these can be bought separately if you just want to, oh, sorry, you got to go overhead, but these can be bought separately, but they come in this set, but there is a set that doesn't have them. So there's a primary set without the tips, and then there's a primary set with the tips, and then you can buy just the tips, and, but at our store, it's the one with the tips, um, but I, I know around the world, you can get them separately or together now i'm going to put out my little dot this is my three look at that coolness i can even go back over you can't really build it up so much because um, i'm too much and the reason is is that knowing what your paint will do is a gift to you Knowing that your paint will do that and stay that is a gift to you. And by the way, like all kudos to like Holbein and Golden and, and the acrylic line because they can all do this. That's why they're pro levels is they, they all do this. But cadmium yellow at $40 a tube, you 
probably would be unlikely to even put out the swatch page, though you should. You would be probably unlikely to swatch out your paint, I would imagine, right? At that kind of cost of tube, it, it could be a little tough to... Oh, no, I dropped my red. You can get it for me in a second. I, I think I've got enough to finish out. It's okay. I'm so sorry, babe. I'm back to my white. And now I'm into the first of my square tips. Thank you, babe. I'm so sorry I dropped it. I'll put it back in my, my thing. Hopefully I didn't squeeze out. You're amazing. I love your long arms. All right. So I'm going to put this tap now on my white. Okay. So I'm going to put my thing on my white. This one is a square tip. So this tip is like a bit of a square. Um, I don't know if on this one, this is probably like in all candor right now, my least favorite tip. But it does do this sort of square beading. And you can get this sort of effect out of it. I think I just had a, a greater affinity for the round tips because they were, I don't know, first or something. All right. Now we'll go ahead and take our black. And this is the ribbon. I love the ribbons. It is a long, flat tip. Now, sometimes it will screw on at an angle that's uncomfortable to hold the pouch. And I do adjust my tip just slightly sometimes for the angle position. And these do definitely do some sheer ups because they do some interesting sheer ups and then also some, I don't know, lippy ribbons is sort of an up and down. I like to see that because that's really cool. And then you can sort of show that out there. All right. And we've got a great color to do uh, next, I think, is our yellow. Right, so if I'm here with my yellow, now I'm going to put this on um, a pouch that I don't think it will impact too much. So here I have a dirty one, right, that I'm going to do, and I'll, and I'll put this right here, just so you can see it. I'm going to mount it. Okay, so look in my tube right now. Yeah, see if we can. I'm going to be by the hand. So you can see in the tube, and you can see what's in here. I'm going to put it on. Right? It screws on very easy. I'm going to go right here by the hand, and I'm going to just ribbon out until it goes from yellow to red. Okay. So I feel like I got from pure yellow to pure red in a little ribbon there. Now, when I take this off, I will have, if I squeeze out just a smidge, but you can see it's not bad. But the tip is definitely mixed. And then I could do blue and then I could do, I could just go through and, and switch colors that way. I think some of you just discovered a new collection of art you're going to be doing. <laughs> Like if I come here and I take the blue, right? So I've got the red on here. Here's the blue. And I and I squeeze it in. Then I can come from here maybe. So we have red and yellow and now we're going blue. Right. And that's with a pretty, pretty dirty tip. And then how dirty is it on the inside would be my next question. It's got a little bit of the red and yellow. Sorry, sorry. My head got in there. Got a little bit of the red and yellow in it. Where, where should I put it right there? Yeah, a little bit of the red and yellow in it. Let's try where you can. So, you know, not too bad. Like when I squeeze it out and not enough to hurt the paint tube. It's actually pretty well engineered. Um, put that back in water. So that is them. 
And what you would do is you would allow your worksheet to dry thoroughly, allow your worksheet to dry thoroughly, and then uh, hang it on your wall. And so then when you're asking yourself, do I want to use which tube, you would then know which nozzle you would use for a technique or an idea you had. You have general reminders of your first core, you know, things you're doing. You know what your color wheel is, you know what your value is, and you know what the exchanges are. And so that's how the Art Group does a promotion in 2024 is uh, we make it worth your while even if you didn't buy the set of paint. That is, yeah. I think that's the most on-brand thing for me ever is like, even if you don't get this set of paint from me, I still made sure you know what you have to know to get going today mm -hmm. on any set of primaries that you were purchased for for the holidays. I don't know if any of you got it or, or not, if you got a set of primaries. Um, and remember, this set right now goes with the beginner acrylic painting course. That beginner acrylic painting course is seven hours of uh, the best instruction ever. Like it's it's everything you need to know. Like what light bulb would you want in your studio? Do you want natural light? Uh, adaptive tools? It's just anything anyone ever asked me answered in this very long series. And then ten wonderful paintings done with this set. You may wonder, how will the new class be a little different? Well, even if you did the first class, I think you're going to get a benefit out of this next class because this class is going to go into, you know, lighting, how, how we determine things, like more art fundamentals on those first things that's teaching you how to paint. So it's just building out our beginner understanding and our beginner course, and it's going to be really hands-on with these paints. So I think that's going to be fun. That's going to be coming up in January. Um, and you could go right now, if you got this set, you could go do the last beginner course. Um, I, and I think you're, it's going to take so many years off of your journey. Man, it answers so many of your first questions where troubleshooting is there. Um, and then, you know, keep in mind, I, this isn't the first time I've covered this material. So on my website, if you're like, I don't want to draw a color wheel, I just want to color a color wheel. I have a lot of color wheels you can color downloadable off of, you can go to my traceable tab and search color wheel and get one. You can also just, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, the Fabriano 1264 pad. Oh, I wish I had one to hold up, but this one's covered in wet paint. Hmm, I'll see if I get one for you. Yeah, John will grab one for me. If you're starting out, grab yourself a multimedia pad of paper. Multimedia paper lets you draw, color, marker. Okay, well, it's good enough. It's This is the brand. I have the multimedia. It's Fabriano 1264 multimedia. All right, this thing here. I wish I'd had it for Big Art Quest. This would have been my book. The Mixed Media 1264. A uh, nine by 12 inch pad, right, is incredible. I work in this pad constantly. I tape worksheets in here. I practice techniques in here. I work out color mixes. I swatch in it. I draw in it. I ink in it. Luna gets crayons and markers and we all draw on it. I think they're wonderful. You grab one of those and, you know, you can just hand draw your own version of this here. Honestly, you could. A really good thing you can do, which will now is now going to be in my next video, is you can hand paint out using this white and gray your own scale, and then and then punch it. And you then you're practicing both your stepping skills and your ability to find value. Oh, so so much you can do. I just want you to know, like you're an artist. There's always a creative way through. Again, I'll show you the set. January 2nd through the 7th, this set, the primary set with the eight tips for this demo is on sale for 35% off. If you're not here in the, if you can't like either you're not buying from our store, you have another favorite store, which is okay, or you're outside of the United States and you can't buy from us. Um, I know that uh, Sennelier is a 135-year-old company. It, they are loved by everybody. They're great. They make great product. They're Great to do business with. I mean, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, the art world is a very gossipy, gossipy catty world. And everyone has nice stuff to say about them. So that impresses me. Yeah. I got to get back to my caps again. It's so funny. I'm like, want to clean up? <laughs> the mom in me is well, like, well, well, now let's start cleaning up, kids, yeah, because we've done the whole thing. We'll do a clean up, have a little lunch. and then, But uh, this is a really, if okay, so I hope you watch this whole video. If you're a first time watcher, please let me know in the comments because this would be a crazy first video to meet me and I want to know you. And thank you. And, and if you're a regular watcher, I want to know you too. Let me know what you thought of this video as a first video in our 2024. John, John, oh, sorry, I keep interrupting you, John. No, no, I was just say thank you to everybody who ordered something from our store and are supporting us there. I see lots of people in the chat who, who have. Thank you thank guys you. so much.
Thank you. And most of the stuff that you see on my show, you can get in my store. But I do try to work with brands that are exceptional quality. Um, I, I can, you can see by the size of my house, profit is not my primary motivator. Um, but the thing to know is that quality is. So even if I'm working with a brand, even if I'm doing a sponsorship, even if I'm showing you something I'm selling in my store, I'm, I'm only doing that because I thought it was cool. Just that's that's the whole knowing me kind of a thing i've got a really great short video when you go to this products page you can see it that that covers these points again real quick and you can go see that whole beginner course you can see me doing paintings in real time and, and those are one hoop paintings those are first time paintings now those are more of the painting where i show a technique and you do a technique and you copy each of my things and we end up with the same thing the next course is a little more that but with concept a little heavier introduced like this is lighting and this is how it works and that kind of like we did here that's simply explained but just so you understand why when we're looking at a color wheel why is red here and why is orange there why is it placed why does it work that way what are we talking about what does it mean that kind of thing understanding the thinking because here's here's the end of the day i am not here trying to make uh like myself famous or any of those things i'm just really trying to help people paint I love helping you guys paint and I want to teach you to paint like me. I want to teach you how to paint like you and well with all the skills and ideas and concepts you can have so you can go take anyone else's course and feel comfortable. So you can take an art course in college and feel comfortable. So you just paint to make yourself happy and feel comfortable and just be in an art league or not be in an art league and feel comfortable. Just enjoy yourself and know that you can do it. And remember this process of being a beginner. If you're a person who did not ever understand how the color wheel worked before this and you just found that out, man, enjoy that moment because those little discoveries are art all the way into the grave. I am telling you, I've known a lot of artists my whole life. We paint on the day we die. We are creative all the way out. I'm surprised we don't come up out of the ground and redecorate our little grave sites. That's how about it. It is a never ending journey of discovery. I know everyone says art journey now. 10 years ago it was me, but now everyone says it. But it is, it is epic. And it's like, a, it's like a Tolkien adventure, this art thing. And so I don't know what brought you to this video. But if I can convince you that art makes your life better, I'm gonna tell you right now, being able to imagine your life being different than what it is, being able to imagine a solution that other people haven't thought of, being able to imagine a future that's different than what you've been given or other people have handed you, that is a powerful tool. That is the tools that the most powerful people in the world use, just their imagination. You listen to any TED Talk and they go, how to be a billionaire, how to be smarter, how to be this, how to be that, how to get more girls, whatever TED Talk it is, somewhere in there they'll say, you've got to be able to visualize it, you've got to be able to dream it, you've got to be able to imagine it. Well, this is where imagination happens, honey, and I'm going to show you how to visualize a world that has a brighter future, that has love in it, that has, has health in it, whatever it is you're at least going to be able to sharpen those tools, right? And get really good at your imagination. You know, I guess I could have put in my title and make a million dollars, but <laughs> probably you could. If you can imagine it, you could. This is a world we're about to, it's about to get weird right now. Being imaginative with the tools the world is about to have and the breakthroughs that are about to drop down and the lifespans that are about to like expand. 2024 is going to be the year that makes it up to us. It's making it up to us right now. You and me, we know that's true. 2024 is making it up to us. It's going to it's going to give back. I mean, it's man, <laughs> from 2019 on, I feel like these years, but this year I feel it. I feel a shift in the ether. I just know she's going to be good to us and it's going to be discoveries and innovations and fun courses and this is the year that you're going to get all those breakthroughs creatively. Something good is going to happen for every one of us here today. I just know it. So, I do want to see you really soon. Uh, I am live mostly on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And if you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification, you can see it. Go by my website. Sign up for the newsletter. I send those out. And they're pretty cool. And, uh, you know, come join the groups on Facebook. I got a Facebook exclusive group. And so you can share your worksheet if you want to in there. Or some art haul that you did or the latest tutorial of mine that you did. And I promise you that group of people, I, we curate very hard on Facebook. This is a curated, moderated group. 
we do break up fights. We don't let people post mean stuff. And we absolutely make sure that you are safe to share your very first painting. And you will have people who will be there for you, encourage you, and lift you up. I, can, I cannot gush enough on my community. I'm good as an art teacher. Uh, you know, there's some other really good art teachers out there, I, I personally think, you know, but I think for my community, I am, I have won the lottery of human beings. I have people in my life. I can't have an event and not just go home feeling so blessed to be part of your lives. So try that Facebook group, join our uh, newsletter, come in, try my course, keep watching and 2024, we are going to be great together. Oh, Shannon Selena says, I cannot find the store. More detail, please. Okay. So if you're looking for the Art Sherpa store, we dropped a link, but I'll say in the video, if you go to the Art Sherpa website, just go to the artsherpa.com, there'll be on the top a bunch of like descriptor tabs uh, on your desktop. If you're on a phone, it's a scroll down and a side menu. So on the scroll down, you can easily see traceables and blogs and things like that. And then on the side menu, you can find more things like mini books and stores and other tabs too. So it's the main scroll down, boop, boop, boop or the side, or the overhead, and that gets you everywhere, even to the school. I don't expect you, because it's a whole different web thing that hosts the school, right? So we just have a link to our school from our website. So if you want to go there, and if you have the newsletter, I put all these links in there for you. Because I, I don't ever actually expect you to find stuff. One of the things is I'm always having to find and locate stuff. <laughs> And I never want you to have that experience. I'm like, links, 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 links. So you're not having to click through. So they should all be, if you have the newsletter, one link. But it's at theartsherpa.com. And uh, the uh, you can find the store there. And we do have this set. But I will have the set after the sale. I've had this set since 2019. This is not some weird, I don't know. You know how sometimes YouTubers get that sponsor and it doesn't have anything to do with what they even do on their channel. And you're just, and that it's all like, even if you liked it, it's there and gone. It's not that. This is a, a product I've used before and will use tomorrow and will use again and again and again and again. And now you know why I like it. Really, 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 really. All right. So we love you. And we like you. And we think that it would be real nice if you became part of our art family. And I'm going to tell you uh, the most important thing in the world. Are you ready, John? I want you to be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I'll see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.